has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who we believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know, you shall be remembered for favor. I say you shall be remembered to be favored. worship accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus as a family we have come together to say Lord receive our praise glory honor power majesty be ascribed unto you alone accept our worship this morning in Jesus name let it come to you as a sweet smelling savour in the name of Jesus and Lord we pray as we look into your world this morning let it be an open heaven in the name of Jesus. We will not live the same way we came in the name of Jesus. You will transform our lives. And at the end, all glory will be yours. And we shall be blessed indeed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We can be seated. Amen. I want to thank God for this wonderful privilege to stand in your presence this morning and to give the word. I'm not taking this privilege uh, in levity. I want to say I appreciate God. I appreciate our daddy in the Lord, our Reverend B.A. Dewu, and the wife, and the council members for counting me worthy to be qualified to stand to minister to you this morning. I pray as we look into God's word, he will bless us himself in Jesus' name. I will disappear that God may appear to speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to open our Bible to the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and we'll be reading together. Amen. Jeremiah 29 11. Can we be upstanding? Let's read it together. I prefer that we show KJV on the screen. KJV on the screen. But if you have your Bible with you, open the book of Jeremiah 29 11. If you are there, you can be on your feet. Let's read together. All right. Are we ready? If you are there, say Amen. If you are not there, say, wait for me. Okay, we are not waiting for anybody. Are we ready? One, two, go. For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. All right, let's read from the KJV together. One, two, go. For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Amen. Amen. This morning we can be seated. I want to talk about what I titled the God of a glorious outcome. The God of a glorious outcome. Amen. Amen. That scripture is so loaded, it's so popular though, and a lot of time we say God have a plan for us. God's plan is to bring us to an expected end. But we don't really know the deepness of the scripture we just read now. It said, his thought towards you are thought of peace. Another scripture says, he is concerned about your welfare. So God is concerned about your welfare and his plan is to bring you to an expected end. So there is an end to a journey in life. There is always somewhere you look forward to when you are on a journey. You are either transiting from one place to the other. 
So God is saying this morning that wherever your thoughts of getting to, God is set to take you there. And you are going to get to your expected end. Amen. For some of us, while we're young, they ask us what we want to become. A lot of us want to be a lawyer. Some of us want to be a doctor. And some of us find ourselves not doing what we have said we want to, to become. But God this morning is saying whatever your plan is and whatever his plan for his life, for your life, as long as it's aligned with the plan of God for you, he's going to take you there. Amen? Whatever your plan is, as long as it aligns with the plan and the thought of God for your life, he will take you there. Amen? Amen. I want to quickly share this story. There is a daddy in the house who went for one of the program of the CFM last year in one farm. Uh, and, you know, during the program, I heard one testimony that ginger my faith, that wherever God has planned for you, he will take you there. And daddy, one of the daddies was telling us that there is this program they used to arrange in their office while he was still in service, that every year they send one of the delegates one of the member of that committee of the team to travel to one of the african country and definitely you know it brings money it brings uh, addition to your profile and all that so it was a stone it was a stone a it was a stone and we, they already knew they already agreed that it was going to be a stone but somehow one copper came into the group and because the copper was from the top they switch the arrangement and just push the copper to travel with all the push and the beg and the plea it fell on the deaf ear of the or guy in the office that no let the copper just go let him enjoy a little and you know he was getting close to his retirement and the fear is that anything can happen if he misses his turn he may not get that turn again but somehow God packaged it in such a way that the next year when he was to go, he was set to go. They paid everything about the journey early, so he traveled early. When he got there early, he was the one that managed all the affairs of the program. And he did so well that they made him the chairman of the program. And as the chairman of the program, he must come back again the next year. That was not the plan. But the plan is that once you go one year, that is enough for you. You have represented Nigeria. But as at the time he went, because he went early, he was to be the chairman. And the chairman has to come again the next year. So he was appointed to come the next year. He was fully sponsored again. And not just an, as an ordinary individual, but as the chairman of the program for the previous year. So what am I driving at? Sometimes in life, you may be struggling and thinking and praying and fasting, going from one mountain to the other, and it's as if the will of God for your life is not coming forth, it's not coming to be, it's not coming to pass. Every other person is getting their testimony, they are sharing their testimony with you, and it's as if your own is not coming. In fact, every of the program they ask people to come, you are always the first to get there. And people are already asking you, when is your own coming? Has God forgive, forgotten you? Is it that you have offended God? Is it that something is wrong somewhere? Just like a journey, I'm here to tell you that you will get to your expected end. Amen? That whatever God has promised you, it may not look like it, but the fact that God has spoken it, the Bible says it's not a man that he will lie, nor the son of man that he repent. Whatever he has said, and you hold on to it in, in his word, it must surely come to pass. So what is it that is his promise? He has promised that you will have your baby. He said, none shall be barren in my house. Amen? So what is it? Is it job? You cannot be jobless. Amen? God has a plan for you. He said he will take you to an expected end. He said he will take you to an expected outcome. That which is your mind, what, what it was on your mind that you have dreamt of, the fact that you can dream about it, there is hope that you will get there. Amen? The fact that you can think about it, there is plan of God in place to take you there. Joseph, he dreamt that he was going to become the ruler. And all that he went through was not looking like it. He went through the prison. He went to become a slave. He went from prison, but God took him to the palace. It may not look like it now, but God is working something out. 
and your testimony is going to be the next. Your testimony is coming in mega, in mega form. The fact that it's delayed, you can see all the people that experienced delay in the Bible, they got mega miracle. Amen. They got mega miracle. So your miracle is going to be mega. In life, just like we say, life is like a journey. God has put, he has assigned angel like Google app to take you to wherever you are going. The angels are telling you, okay, move now. Take your right, take your left. And just like Google map, someone said it jokingly in a CFM uh, platform one time. He said, Google map, they don't tell you you are stupid when you are wrong. Sometimes it's difficult for your husband or your wife to teach you how to drive. Funny enough, somebody told me the husband taught her how to drive and she's more like a James Bond, more than the husband now. Praise God. But what am I trying to say? When the Google map is telling you where to go, even though you miss it, the Google map will not tell you, ah, you are very foolish, or did I tell you it left? It will just follow you. You keep going until you have to turn back or ask people around. But the Google map will not lead you wrong. That is exactly how the Spirit of God will not lead you wrong. But you need to learn to listen. It will tell you, go right, go left, the next, make a new turn, make this. But most of the time, our problem is we don't listen. Amen. If you want to get to your destination, there are things you need to do. There are things we need to do. The requirement for reaching God's destination for our life. Number one is obedience. Can we say it together? Obedience. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways acknowledging not uh, the next person beside you not another person around you but acknowledge you and it will direct your path obedience sometimes in Lagos you may be on the right path and you decide to just ask somebody and you leave the Google map out this is where you are going on a Lagos boy that does not even know the area we tell you, oh, God, you don't miss road. You don't miss road. You go turn back. You know, the Spirit of God is just telling you, keep moving. But you feel you are missing it and you decide to ask the wrong person. There are times we miss it when we ask the wrong people. But obedience, when the Spirit of God is with you in the vehicle, it leads you to the right direction. It tells you, even if you have to ask people, it will tell you the right person to ask. It will tell you the right place to be at the right time. He will tell you, move out of here now. But all we need to do is to be obedient. Is to be obedient. In speaking at every point in time. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Lean not on your own understanding. By our own understanding, sometimes we may miss it. We may big time miss it. For instance, Samuel almost missed it when he was going to anoint David. He got there, he saw mighty men, giant, big guys. You know, that was the first thought. He saw Saul, giant, big, and all that, and Saul became the first king. But he was going to anoint David. He was still looking for the same feature. But until the Spirit of God told him, in among all these ones, none of them is qualified. The same thing happened to the wise men when they were going to locate Jesus. The moment they said, a king is in the land, they were going to the kingdom. Uh, king, we have come to anoint your latest child. He said, no, I don't have a child in this. No, but the king has been born. And they alerted him. And then the problem started. That they had to kill all the people that was Jesus' mate. So Jesus does not have age mate because of that story. Amen? So what am I driving at? Sometimes your mindset, your physical build, or your instinct can mislead you. He said, lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Just like Abraham. Abraham was just on his own and God said, oh yeah, stand up. Just like one who follow Google map. That was how Abraham was following. He was just following. Sometimes you don't know where you are going, but when you put on the Google map, a lot of us put enough fuel when they tell you how many kilometers you are traveling. That is because you have faith in what the Google map is telling you. God did not even have to tell Abraham where he's going. He said, go to the land I will show you. It means he was not walking alone. God will say, yeah, rest here today. He was in he was in contact. He was communicating. God will tell him, oh yeah, move on today. Okay, move to the right. Okay, move to the left. That was exa that's exactly what God is expecting of us. To be obedient in all ways. Lean not on your own understanding. Amen. 
Amen. I want us to read the scripture. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5. Joshua 1 1 to 5. Joshua 1, 1 to 5, I, I read. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, upon I have given you. Every every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon i have given you as i said to moses from the wilderness and this lebanon as far as the great river the river Ephrates, and the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not leave you nor forsake you let me read verse 8 i jump to verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success amen so if you want to make your way prosperous another thing you need to do is to trust in god's word how much of this word do you know at every point in time god is speaking sometimes you switch on your radio and that particular situation is addressing your situation at that moment you buy suya and they will give you a newspaper and what you are reading is concerning you god has found you to suya house sometimes you just switch on the tv and they are addressing your case god is speaking at every point in time you're on the internet you're on facebook and somebody is addressing the situation that concerns you god is speaking at every point in time even right here on the altar god is using my mouth to speak he's using the pastors he's using somebody leading the chorus he's leading, using somebody leading the prayer at every point in time god keeps speaking but it is now left for us to trust god's word the bible says it's not a man that he should lie and you, the book of law should not depart from your heart meditate on it day and night meditate it is when you meditate you get god's plan for your life the word of god is just like a dead man that died and left a will if the child does not go through the will he will not know what the plan of his father is for his life so as long as you keep avoiding the will you will never know what the will of god is for your life the will of god is in the bible but you must read it if not they will tell you the only house your father has is in uh, ajegule whereas he has a house in asokoro for you he has a land in maitama for you to build but you may not know his will until you go through his will which is in his word he has written a will concerning you but you need to look at that word and trust his will for your life trust is will for your life sometimes the devil even tell you look into your face and say ah okay you think that hundred dollar your father gave you is original it's fake and sometimes you look at it and say oh this thing is fake i don't even believe it anymore praise god god will never give you a counterfeit it may look rough but let me tell you the same value that is what that money is having god has a plan for you god has a great great future for you Another thing you need to do for you to get to God's destination for your life is to be consistent in serving the Lord. Amen. Psalm 84 verse 7 says, They go from strength to strength till each appear before God in Zion. Be consistent in serving God. There are some of us at a point in our life we get to a crossroad. In fact, we begin to tell ourselves, God has been by us. God has been doing for A and is not doing for me. What have I done to God to end this? What is my offense? And sometimes some of us have backslided. We may still be praising God. We may still be clapping. In fact, some marriages are no longer together. Interesting enough, they are still together wearing the same clothes. But in their heart of heart, the man hurts the lady. And she's no longer one with the wife. The, man, the woman hurts the husband. 
and is already looking out. And you will think they are one, but they are not one. Praise God. I tell you this morning, until you make amend and come back to God and say, Lord, I want to come back to my first love. There are situations in life that have made you that used to come early to church to come and clean the seat. Maybe somebody just told you something very funny. And you look at yourself and say, uh-uh. Me, a old manager, a old MD. I'm even coming to clean your toilet. You are telling me we are not cleaning it here. That is just a test. And some of us are backslidden. We thought we should not just do this again. I can't take it anymore. Some of us have quit the choir. Some of us have quit the prayer band. And we, 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 we are saying, God, you are not faithful. God, you are not doing well. I tell you, you are getting the major attack because there is something glorious coming your way. Amen. Have you seen a football field when people are playing ball? Sometimes there are people they don't even tack at all because they know that guy. He does not even, he cannot even make, he can't score a goal. But there are some people that when they get the ball, they are going to score. What will the best coach do? He will say, stay on that guy. The reason why they are staying on you is because God knows and the devil knows that when you will have the ball, you are going to make a goal. He knows that when your miracle come, a lot of soul will be one for Christ. He knows that when your miracle come, some people will be coming to Christ on their own accord. He knows that when you come to God, you will be the major pillar in the house of God. He knows that the moment you give your life to Christ, the devil is ruined for life. So he's trying as much as possible to discourage you. And you'll be like, ah, they've never even been to my house before. All of them, they don't care. They, and in fact, I'm going to look for a caring church. Until you get there, you'll know that almost all the church are the same. It can look like a camouflage, but it is you and God. The relationship is between you and God. As this point came to me while I was preparing, I remember this old song. I don't know, maybe it's for somebody here. It's a Yoruba song. It says, Kilo feti yako fifo kilo deti yo jino soloru ba oloru laja. That song was a song sung by the Sears Church when I was young. There are people who are becoming enmity with God because God seems to be too late. But I'm here this morning to tell you that God is never late. Can you tell your neighbor, God is never late? Say like a minute, say, God is never late. This morning, God wants you to settle this call with him. And he wants to say, my son, come back. I'm never late. I'm working the best for you. There are times our parents will take, they will take us to the market, they will buy fish, they will buy this, they will buy that, they will buy, and when we get to, we expect to start eating the fish raw. But we take time for the fish to become something you can eat. And we think they are very, very selfish. After all, we bought fish. We bought ugu. Let's get to man, start giving me the food. God is cooking something for you. Say like you say, God is cooking something up for you. He will head to walk on me. Ba alone, Laja. He will head to walk on me. Ba alone, Laja. Kilo wati ako ri. Kilo feti ako fifo. Kilo deti o jino solor. Ba alone, Laja. Whatever may be the pain in your heart, God is feeling your pain. We have a priest that is going through the same pain you are going. He has gone through the same pain you are going through. He has been wounded. He has been beaten. He has been slapped. He, he, he can feel your pain. He went through the same blood you went through. Some people say when Jesus was being beaten, another spirit came upon him that was not feeling it. He felt it. If you know, he felt that was why even at a point he felt God forsook him. 
There's a situation you find yourself in as if, God, where are you? Just like when some disciples were with Jesus and Jesus said, let us go to the other side. It was Jesus, so they were on their own. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And they were in the boat. They were in the boat. All of a sudden, the storm started. And Jesus was busy sleeping. They woke him up after they have definitely tried all they could. And Jesus stood and he rebuked the storm and he spoke to the wind and there was calmness. I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus will rebuke the storm in your life. He will speak to the wind in your life. Whatever the storm may be, I tell you, storms are just challenges to push you, to try you, to make you do the things you should not do. There are things they have in that boat they should not throw away. But they just needed to lighten the weight of the storm, I mean of the boat, so that the storm will not capsize the boat. And they started throwing good things that should be with them. There are things that storm will take from you. They will tell you, ah, let us try this other test. You will pay. They will say, let us try this other one. You will pay. They will say, let us try this one. Maybe it is, you will pay. But all you need to do this morning, let me tell you, there are things you need to do this morning. One of it is be obedient. Keep walking in his ways. I've said it before, and hold on to his word. If you can do all those things this morning, I tell you, you can come out from every storm. His word is be still, just like the choir sang this morning. Be still and know that I'm God. God is telling you, it is not the time for you to waste all your resources. I am coming in. Jesus is in your boat. And he has a plan to take you to that destination. He's the one that says, let us go to the other side. So you will not die along the way. He will take you there. You will get to your destination. You will get to your destination. He will take you there. You will have that baby. You will build that house. God is not a God of uncompleted building. He's not a God of uncompleted build project. Once he has started with you, he will complete with you. That plan he has started with you, he will complete with you. You have been going for housewarming. Your own is going to be the next. You have been going for naming ceremony. Your own is going to be the next. Don't draw back. Don't turn back. That is my message for you this morning. Don't turn back. Tell your neighbor, don't turn back. Say like a minute, say don't turn back. When you are in this kind of situation, one of the things, the trouble and the problem of this world will take away from you is your peace. The Bible says, I give unto you peace, not as the world give. So God has come to give you peace. John 14, 27. And you know that scripture says, the plan I have towards you, they are taught of good. To give you peace. So anything that take away your peace is not from God. Amen? Anything that take away your peace is not from God. And those are the defeat, the, the failure, the death, near success syndrome, whatever the name is, the struggle, the sorrow, the pain, the unhappiness, the headache, the hardship, they are not from God. Anything that take away your peace is not from God. The moment you see your peace is taken away, is shaken, the way out. Number one, reach out to God. When that boat was almost sinking, they had to call Jesus, but they tried all humanly speaking to see what they can do. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Let me tell you this. There's this time, let me tell you my story personally. There was one time I was at the headquarters of my church. We were in the printing department, the printing unit of my department. And we handle printing. If you need printing in like two, three days, just call Psalmist. You will get it. So I was taken off and I was sent to the Maraba branch of our office. When I was there, I left some team on ground. My boys, my guys. I thought with my guys on ground, anything I need is on the go. Ha! I'm not retired. I'm still in the system. While I was there, I called the guys and the request I sent first week, 
Second week, my guys are in charge. Third week, fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, ah. That was, do you know that was then I knew that this prayer needs to come in. I was not praying. Because I don't think it, it needs prayer at all. I think it's something uh, my guys should be able to handle. But it was becoming embarrassment. It was becoming embarrassing. The people that own the certificate were already telling me, we need to be though, we need to do this. We need... And now I, I started fidgeting. That was when I know that I need to pray. There are situations in our life, we just feel professionally we will handle it. But I'm here to tell you that there are some things that goes beyond your physical power. What you can handle on your own. You just need to kneel down and pray. There's a woman in my fellowship in Maraba that was out to testify about how they spent a lot of money. The doctor could not diagnose what was wrong with their daughter. And somebody in the hospital said, have you considered praying? You need to pray. But that was when it dawned on her. After all the, the money they spent, it now dawned on her. She now prayed that night. She fasted. And on the third day, God told her, go and get palm kernel seed. And give it to her to lick. Do you know, she started giving her palm kernel seed. On Friday, the person that could not walk, that could not talk, could stand up. And there was healing. God will tell you some things in the place of prayer. God will open your eyes in the place of prayer. Beyond what you can phantom, beyond what doctor can say, God will just tell you what to do. He will tell you the right people to meet. That is what prayer can do. When you step to God in the place of prayer, there's still a scripture I want us to read, and that is where I'll be rounding up. That will be the last scripture for this message. Praise God. Joshua 7, I will read from verse 1 to 12. Joshua 7. 1 to 12. I will read quickly. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding their customs. That Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of their customs. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spy out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about thirty-six men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Chebarim, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore, the heart of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his cloak and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their head. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan to all, to, at all, to deliver us into the end of the Amorite, to destroy us? Oh, that we have been content and dwell on the other side of the Jordan. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns his back before its enemy? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my convention, covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of their costing and have both stolen and deceived, and they were also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy, but turned their back before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy their costing from among you. Praise God. That story was talking about Joshua. The first part we read was talking about Joshua receiving from God. God gave his word, I will be with you. No nation will defeat you. You are going to be the head. You will be the tail. You will be this. You will be that. Nobody will be able to challenge you. But they went and they, a particular war, and they met defeat. Why the defeat? God have instructed them when they left Egypt and they passed through Jordan on the plain ground. Jordan is a big river. But God parted Jordan. 
the people have been hearing about what God has done in their life. Just like God has been doing wonderful things in your life and people have been hearing testimony. God, people have been hearing about what God is doing in your life. And people already know that God is with these people. All of a sudden, God gave them an instruction. This is the first place they fought. And why they fought that place in Jericho? They fought Jericho. They did not have to fight. God fought the battle. And he told them, this is your first battle. Because I'm going to win this battle. Whatever you see in this battle, destroy the people, but bring the gold. Give it to God. That sounds to me more like, like first fruit or like, like tight. Bring it to God. Give all the gold. Bring all the silver. Bring all the diamond. Anything you see there that is precious, it is for me. This was their first war. And they went to that battle. They came back and the Bible reported that everything went well. But somebody stole their costume. And they now went to another war that should not cost them anything. And in that battle, they lost 36 men to a small country. What did Joshua did? He called upon God. I told you, call upon God. And then God began to open your eyes. He began to tell him, this and this was the error. This and this was what happened. And he gave him a solution. There is always a solution in the place of prayer. And what was the solution? Somebody sinned. I am here to let you know that sin takes away your peace. And the moment anything that takes away your sin, I mean your peace, lies inside of you, it can make you not to defeat the enemy. It will make you to always be defeated, no matter the number of wars you go. So your defeat may be as a result of those things that take away your peace. I'm not here to label somebody a sinner, but you and I know those things that take away your peace. Each time the Holy Spirit is telling you, do you want to remain on this spot? Why not change your way from this thing that you used to do? You say, I ah, leave that thing. Now so everybody they do them. But the Holy Spirit wants you to move forward. He said you should not be on this spot anymore. He wants to take you to your destination. But you are abhorring those things. The Bible says, and Achan saw those things and he took them. And when he took them, he kept them in his house. But God did not say Achan. He said the Israel have sinned. So sometimes when you walk with sinner, God sees you as a company of sinner. A priest, I mean a prophet was asked to go and preach. And while he was in a boat, the boat was almost capsizing. God was not looking at the righteousness of every other person. He was looking at a sinner inside that boat. So as long as you have sin in your household, in your home, in your heart, you will continue to be defeated. And you have a privilege this morning that Achan never had. Achan will have probably gone in the middle of the night and say, ah, please, so I was the one that did this thing. And maybe Joshua will have said, oh, my son, why did you do this now? And he will have probably cried to God. And God will have said, oh, I forgive you because he came out on his own accord. He did not do that. He made his sin, found him out. God began to open the eyes of, the prof, uh, of, of Joshua. And the moment he fished him out, the Bible says they stoned him to death. Not only him, they stoned his wife, they stoned his children, they stoned his father, they stoned his whole generation. Sins destroy generation. Sins destroy home. Sins destroy business. It destroy life. And you are beginning to ask yourself, why am I still struggling? Why am I like this? Have you considered those things that seize your peace? And you keep doing them. The moment you keep having them, the moment you keep doing them, you discover that you are stuck. If you keep sinning, you will keep sinking. If you don't want to sink again and you want to come and float and you don't want to, to, to sink in the storm of life, it is an opportunity for you this morning before your sin catch up with you to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me my sin. I have sinned. I have sinned. He's willing. The Bible says if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you all, to forgive us of all unrighteousness and wash us. God is faithful. He is still faithful. And there are times when you pray, you will open your eyes to see those who are behind your situation. And the Bible says that you, the Bible says no weapon formed against you 
shall prosper. Amen? But anyone that comes in judgment against you, you shall condemn. He will leave you with the assignment to condemn. Amen? And say, Lord, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. It is with your mouth. But you cannot condemn when you are still living in sin because you are, you are the one that chained yourself to a spot. You will get to your destination. You will get to your destination. Can we be on our feet this morning? Can we be on our feet this morning? And I want to make a call. I'm giving you the chance that Achan never had. We're talking about a God that can take you to your desired end. To your desired end. To a desired outcome. And it's as if you are stuck. And you want to say, Lord Jesus, help me at this point that I am. And you have the privilege that I can never have this morning. To say, Lord, I am sorry. Through the blood of Jesus, you have the grace to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want you to cleanse me from every chain. Take away every bond, everything that has kept me on one spot. And move me to the next level or the right level for my life. You are here. I want to give you a, a privilege this morning to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come in to stay. Come and change my situation. Come and turn my life around. Come and turn my life around. I say, if you remain in sin, if you keep sinning, you will keep sinking. Are you not tired of sinking? God does not want you to die in your sin. If you are here this morning, we want to make choice for Jesus. I want to just see you all eyes closed, all air bow. I want you to just see you raise your hands to Jesus wherever you are. You want to make a decision for Jesus Christ and you want to say, Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Take me out from every place where I've been stuck and take me to the destination you have in store for me. You are here, just raise your hands. Raise your hand wherever you are. I can see that hand. I can see that hand. If you are raising it, raise it very well. If you are raising it, raise it very well. If you raise your hand, I want you to come up. Come forward. If you are raising your hand, the man of God will want to pray with you. Our daddy here will pray with you. If you are raising that hand, I want you to come up. I want to say, Lord Jesus, I'm tired of this spot where I am. And I've heard this morning that if I turn myself in, you can forgive me. You can cleanse me from my sin. You can purify my soul. And give me an opportunity to get to my destination. If you are coming out, come out fast. The man of God wants to pray with you. Of God want to pray with you. If you are coming, come fast. Come fast. Come fast. If you are coming, come fast.